All right. Well, here we are for another episode of Dualistic Unity Social. This one was recorded right after episode 15 of season, uh, of season five. I just smoked a giant joint. I just want to get that out of the way right now. My face is still adjusting to this new relaxed attitude I have towards things. Uh, the episode that we recorded just previous to this was with Jackie, uh, who everybody knows from the community. Jackie, if you're listening, hi. Um, it was great. Really good stuff. I really enjoy conversations where we get to go back and forth between the micro and the macro. I really enjoy that, I guess, flip in perspective from the individual to the whole. And when you're talking about intelligence, when you're talking about the intelligence of an individual such as you, listener, in any moment, you are intelligence in motion. Regardless of what you might think about that, there is intelligence driving everything that you are. Your body, your heartbeat, your brain, every single thing that you do is driven by some level of intelligence. You may not think it's intelligent according to your own standard or bar, but that doesn't mean it's not intelligence, learning, pattern recognition, growth, all of that fun stuff. But then there's the interaction with you and everyone else. And that is equally intelligence in communication. Like we could think of it as opposite intelligences, but reality itself from people to nature is intelligence. And so when you start flipping back and forth between the individual and the collective, recognizing that you are an extension of a whole thing that you are not an extension of at all, that you are the awareness of entirely. It's a really interesting conversation. Yeah, it's a good episode. I'm looking forward to it coming out. I already know what the title is going to be. Do you, can you guess? Effort and ease. I love it. That's that's perfect because, oh, man, it's like it's all it comes down to. And then when when you do start to realize that the subject, your subjective experience is the like, the experience that is happening, like the entirety of the experience that is happening. It's it's not even close to. About anything that you do, it's just about what you are in each and every moment. And so there's not a correct way to do anything. It's just your state of being because you're it, you're the entirety of it playing out. And so there's like, it's, it's weird. Cause I was thinking, uh, I was walking around before this episode and kind of like I was walking around New York and like kind of, kind of bopping around, not full on dancing, but like kind of doing it and i was not paying attention to anyone else or if anyone else was doing anything but it just hit me how often you know if i see someone else dancing on the street like i'll at least you know wiggle around a little i don't know if you can call it dancing but you know like feel feel a little bit of of some movement with things and so even in a situation like that like that person who was dancing initially had sway on me, like had impact for someone who was willing to see it in that way. Whereas if someone were to see it and judge and, and fight it, there would be a resistance and almost more tension. So seeing someone doing something out of the quote unquote ordinary inevitably has a stronger pull one way or another. And those willing to not see it as something that's judgmental or not even that it just has a pull on everything because in someone judging that person, they have an opportunity to question their judgment. They have an opportunity to look at their judgment itself and question that. And so whether the pull is from someone, you know, dance, just in this example, dancing, or it's someone having a judgment and the willingness to question it if they're willing to it provides an opportunity for everyone and so the willingness to just be free in yourself not live for anyone but you in entirety for your experience like that inevitably has the most drastic push or pull and again no certainty with that but the the more outside of the everything everyone's used to 
it is like there's a potential for a pull and a, a heavy potential, I guess. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's just interesting how we write off like our influence on things and you start looking around and you're like, oh, of course, everything I do has some degree of influence and I don't know what it is at all. There is no certainty with that. But even if, and I was thinking for like videos, if I post a video and it gets, you know, hundreds of thousands of views versus 3000 views, it's like, I don't know if that video is going to resonate super fucking deeply with 30 people from the 3000 view video versus a couple hundred thousand might not resonate deeply with anyone. And so there's no certainty with any degree of anything that we do, even how you act. You know, you have this idea of the right or the wrong thing to do. I have this idea of the right or the wrong thing to do, but there's no certainty with the impacts of those. And oftentimes when we try and look perfect for ourselves, that's not really having that much influence when we're so absorbed in how I look, how I'm doing there. That's all the folks. And that's, that's that self-absorption being focused on that. So sometimes the best thing for the all and everything of you is not you being perfect it is looking like a fool it is stumbling it is messing up or fucking up or, or failing or whatever you know you want to call it but really it's just the inevitability of finding your feet in a sense the willingness to not hold on quite so often to that control it, it inevitably will you know take a second to catch your balance but then it you know how it plays out is kind of irrelevant in a sense because comes down to to you being what you are not doing anything specific it it's always funny we were talking about this previously about you know improvement and uh it's always the same like we we go through this process of change and then there are some changes that we decide i like that that makes me look or feel better and then there are other changes where i'm like where we think we don't like that at all and it's just because we're labeling them at the end of the day. They're really just changes. We're just always changing. And it's just that we, we think to ourselves, well, if I'm not in control, if I'm not deliberately pointing myself in a certain direction, then I'm not going to change in a way that is going to help me grow. And immediately we get in our own way. A perfect example. One of the best ways to build core strength is to stand on one leg and juggle. And the reason is because every time you have to ca catch yourself and correct yourself, that's core strength. But do you see what I'm saying there? It's in losing your balance that you learn how to correct, right? So if you were to judge yourself every time you lost your balance, you, you likely wouldn't do that exercise for very long. You wouldn't give yourself the ability to develop that strength. It's in losing your balance. In fact, that you're doing the purpose of the exercise. And that's the whole point is that if you stop judging yourself and stop telling yourself, oh my God, I'm doing the wrong thing because it doesn't feel like I'm in control. Then after a while, you start to realize, oh, okay, actually what's better than feeling like I'm in control is feeling like I don't need to be. And it, that is the case because feeling like you need to be in control is a constant race you can't win. It's always going to be a fear that you're, you've lost control, that control can, it can be something that slips away from you. But to recognize you don't need control, to be able to just adapt to what's happening, to just take in what's happening right now and do the best you can and recognize that's all you can do because that's everything that you are up until that moment. That's it. Life is just one series of moments. Then you're not terrified of some future event because you can do the same thing with that event that you can right now. The best you can. That's all you can do. And if anything that would turn out in any way, like you'd be okay too. Like I, uh, as you were talking, I was like, fuck almost all of my, uh, judgment. I feel like is anticipatory judgment. It's like, and in anticipation, but then I'll be doing something or I'll be on a call or whatever. And it's usually like in anticipation to speaking, like if I ever get a buildup of anything, but then as I'm talking, like it kind of goes away. And then if I, you know, like stumble, it's like, 
I almost never look back and I'm like, God, that was so dumb. Like I'm able to let it go quick. And so I'm, I'm concerned about certain things happening, but then over and over and over, I kind of glide on top of them and I don't even remember it happening before because there's not like even in a certainty of, of talking or saying anything, like there's no certainty that being clear or saying the thing that you want to say in the way you want to say it is the best thing. And then as you're talking, it's all, it's almost like, Oh man, it's funny. Cause like, as I'm talking, I, I let go. It's seemingly a lot easier than when I'm not talking and I can feel, and this was one, cause I've been dealing with this like the last couple of days, just the, the buzz of things coming back and almost like veiling when I'm, talking with someone like being able to fully hear what they're saying and then it hit me that i was fighting that experience like i was judging that experience because it was it was my judgment of whatever was going on when i stopped judging that that like this shouldn't be happening this way that this experience is going shouldn't be happening it kind of it kind of dropped off and there isn't and it's like there isn't any certainty with how things are going to go, how they're going to turn out whatsoever. And so there's no use in maintaining this idea of the right way for it to play out of the correct way. Cause those are the th thoughts I hold on to is like an assumption that if I hold on to this thought or say this thing or do this thing, that's going to be what's best, but without a, what's best without a, an objective best thing to happen, there's no use in holding on to those things I guess unless you don't have faith in yourself and you feel like you got to hold on to certain things and, and you can't just show up and, and do it. But if you don't know, even if nothing happens, you don't know if that's a better or worse situation. So like any, any thoughts we're holding on to is some degree of a certainty in the future about the way that something will happen. And when there's none, it's like there aren't so many thoughts clouding what's happening, bailing you from what's going on here and now. Which means that you can learn more from what you're doing. It, when you look at it for what it is, all we're saying is pay attention to what you're doing. That's really what we're saying. It's just that we're saying it not just on a moment to moment basis, but also as, as an overarching habitual way of living. Because right now, while you might be paying attention from moment to moment here and there, more often than not, you're lost in your thoughts. And I say this to myself you know, as a person going through thinking, because we have this overcommitment to thinking. That's all it is. And we don't recognize that we don't have to be thinking as much as we do. Not in this present moment, because you can, you can calm yourself, you can meditate, you can let your thoughts go. But when shit hits the fan, what do you reach for? Self-judgment. Right? We reach for a narrative. We reach for some idea of how am I doing in all of this? Because I don't feel like I'm in control. And so it's just it's just recognizing that that's not helping. It doesn't do anything for you. You can let that go and continue on. And you're still going to be intelligence met, like processing as you go. But we want to think about ourselves. We want to think, how am I doing? Where and, and as soon as we do that, now we're all distorted. It's really weird how we do that. It, it's like... We think to ourselves, well, I'm doing the best I can, but it doesn't feel like I'm moving fast enough. So if I beat myself up and tell myself I should be better, then I'm going to do a better job now. And meanwhile, while I'm going through that whole process, I just stab myself in the thumb with something because I wasn't paying attention. I was going through my, this, this idea in my head that I should be better. And it's like the only way to get better is just to do what you're doing over and over and over again. Right. Until you have more and more recognition of what it is you're doing, because that's what it is. You're recognizing more of what you're doing, and that's what leads to mastery. But that only happens through attention. It doesn't happen through whipping yourself. You know, this is why this uh, this fixation with discipline. You've heard this this crap. It's a, it's a big thing lately. I know Joe Rogan's all about it. And, and a lot of like, uh, you know, the motivational speakers, especially the guys that go to the gym, <laughs> they're all like discipline discipline your man is disciplined all that shit. it's like you know discipline is a poor replacement for priority 
Like it's a good way to whip yourself in a direction, sure. But if you're beating yourself up when you're not doing it, then you know that's still not freedom. You're not you're not actually improving your life any. Maybe a little bit, but you're doing so with it. Now it's a shame. Yeah, it's oh man, I've I've used that one for a long, long time. The the discipline. <laughs> so like that that's what got me through everything, it seemed like. And it, it came hand in hand with a shitload of judgment too and self-judgment and yeah because it it almost inevitably does because you're setting a bar for yourself and, and setting a correct path for yourself as opposed to just being fully involved in the thing that's happening and so any it's almost like it's really hard to be involved in the thing that you're doing for the sake of the thing that you're doing if you're utilizing discipline and using discipline, because it's almost like discipline inevitably creates a, a timeline. It's like, I'm doing this for this. It's a dichotomy immediately. As soon as it's discipline, as opposed to priority enthusiasm are just, just one thing. There's not for another thing. Cause if it's, it's for the thing in and of itself, discipline isn't necessary. And if you were using discipline, to do that one thing, it wouldn't be discipline. If there's enthusiasm is involved, if you're appreciating the step as opposed to thinking that it's getting you somewhere and therefore not really living your life fully, it's like there's always going to be some some pull. And I can hear people saying, I can hear myself saying like, oh, but you can do something disciplined. You can be disciplined and then be focused on the thing that you're doing. You can be present in the thing that you're doing. It's like, yeah. And in those moments that you're present, you're not focused on the thing that you're getting to or, or what it's becoming for you. And so at whatever scale it's on it, it comes down to doing a thing for the thing. If you're being present and that can become your entire life. And then something like discipline, it's like when the, all of the priorities are looked at, there isn't so much discipline that's necessary because a lot of certain we think it's a certain priority, but really it's another priority, like priority of, oh, well, I want to make more money. Yeah. But like, what is that priority being informed by? Because there's another priority. You can't eat money. You can't live in money. You can't, you know, drive around in money. You got to transfer it for something. And so what priority is there that's causing you to think that your priority is getting this money? Because once those start to get questioned and why you need certain things and why you need external validation at all then there isn't so much a need for the the things that you thought that you needed anymore and so some of those priorities run deeper than you think and uh yeah you got to look at all components of it <laughs> yeah absolutely well look, so here's here's a great example uh somebody was saying you know what if we have discipline in the form of choosing to go to the gym even times where we feel like being lazy and you know sometimes you just you know I guess is the point. You know when you're more or less just making an excuse because you don't want to go. On the other hand, what if you're not feeling lazy? What if you are actually catching a cold? What if you're actually coming down with something? Are you going to sit there and go, no, nah, no, nah, I got to get to the gym. Otherwise, I'm not disciplined. And then you go to the gym and everybody else gets sick because you just had to force your way to the gym to prove something to yourself. And I think that's it. Is it are you trying to prove something to yourself? Are you trying to prove something to yourself? Because if you are, then that is immediately giving you a bias. It's skewing your perception. You are going to do things that are unreasonable just for the fact that you feel like you need to. What are you having to prove? What are you trying to prove? And if it's not about proving it, then it really is a matter of sensitivity day to day. You will know. You'll be like, ah, I haven't went to the gym for a few days. I'm going to go. I'm going to go right now. And it's not going to be a because I'm not disciplined. I've got to prove to myself I can still do this, but you'll recognize it through awareness itself. And that awareness, that sensitivity for what you're feeling moment to moment to moment comes from not being in your head all the time. But how can you not be in your head if you're constantly measuring yourself up to this bar, if you're constantly trying to be something else? So it really is, it's a bit of a paradox because in relaxing and being yourself, you will find more energy and more enthusiasm and more drive to do things than you ever will through stressing out about how little you're doing. 
It's just that it's context and experience. If you don't have motivation to do things, go get more experience. The more experience you have, the more spectrum of reality you will see. And the more you'll start to go, huh, wow, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things. It's just so easy to get caught up in living in the same neighborhood, in the same house, with the same family, for example, or in the same town. Like it's so easy in our current world to just get caught up in things being the same all the time. We don't recognize that it's a very small fishbowl we live in. You know, and so we don't really feel inspired to get out of that fishbowl because we don't know the alternatives. Go experience things. As soon as you do that, trust me, you'll have more enthusiasm and you'll have more drive because your eyes will be a little bit wider. Life will mean a little bit more. Amen. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, yeah, and there's the the opportunity. Like everything in that spot when you are willing to to just prioritize where you're at. It's like everything's seen as an opportunity almost and, and in potential. And there's like sensitivity to like a pull to certain options that just make more sense based on like a, I don't even know how to explain it. Just like a sort of pull or just, I guess, sensitivity to the experience that you're, that you're having. And so, but there's like a sort of equal playing field with everything. Like everything could be an option and you just, get naturally drawn towards certain options from that willingness to not think, you know, not be dead set on anything happening. Like it's kind of a, it's like a trippy experience when you're actually where you're at. It's like a, a different type of experience where things are just make more sense and like start making really good sense and everything. And you start aligning more with the things that make the most sense and there isn't so much hesitation there isn't so much concern because nothing could mean anything about you and and you know that and i know that because when i'm not maintaining some judgment some perception some idea it's like there's nothing there for me to judge and then what's left is what is and you're uh, it's like i'm actually looking at reality as opposed to my assumptions because your assumptions are never reality. And so everything right now is uncertain and your willingness to realize that and sit in that and not then make assumptions about yourself or what that means. Like you start seeing things for what they actually are. And until you can let go of your assumptions of what's best of what's happening, of what's going on, of where you're at and all of those assumptions until you, are willing to question those or at least look at them or let them go. You're not even going to be seeing close to what's actually happening. And the more rigidly you hold on to those assumptions, the more clouded that reality starts to get. So it's just uncertainty because that runs on every degree, like every fucking degree of what's happening from the micro to the macro is uncertain. And the more willing you are to be that, the more context you gain. Well said. Uh, we had a response. Um, I think a relaxed form of discipline can be beneficial. And it's just that those two things are so contradictory. A relaxed form of discipline isn't really a discipline because a discipline is a very rigid regiment it is a very rigid thing you must live up to this thing you must abide by this thing i know i've i've had plenty of disciplines i absolutely understand that there is very little that's relaxing about it and it really just comes down to the idea that if i don't have this structure i'm not going to change in the way that i want which is again why priority itself is so important you know, and often in, in, in certain schools or when we're learning certain things, you know, we hope to, we just keep doing it. We keep doing it. We keep doing it. And as we do so, sometimes we'll have a recognition that makes it mean more to us. So suddenly we'll have more interest in it and that will drive us to learn more. But then we get caught up in the idea that now I need to discipline myself if I really want to be good at this thing. And then years later, we, we look back and go, why didn't I try to enjoy that more? Like, why didn't I just try to play? This is something that happens with, with instruments, especially, you know, somebody goes and they learn how to play an instrument and they 
struggle and they try and then they try to live up to their teacher's expectations if they have one of those teachers right and they try to get through the whole schooling system for that instrument to get to a point where now they officially know how to play and now all they play is the things that they have sheet music for because they're not actually playing right or if they are they're playing according to somebody else's tune and it's because they struggled so hard to be disciplined to learn this thing in the way that everybody else says you should learn this thing that they weren't just experimenting, learning about themselves. What's your type of music? How would you express yourself on that instrument? Not how have others expressed themselves. How would you? Maybe you would come up with a sound that's totally different. You know, this is why it's so very funny to me that people will, will refer to violin and fiddle, but they're the same thing played differently. Oh, shit. I had no idea. That's really fucking funny. We have two different names for just two ways of playing a certain thing. That's wild. But it's so, oh, man, it's so interesting. Like, as we get on a track of the right way to do something, it, it like, cuts down our creativity. Like, if any of the old famous musicians like Beethoven, Mozart, any of those guys, if they had been following a very rigid track they wouldn't have their unique sound it's like i'm sure i'm guessing they probably went through some lessons and, and learned how to do it but then if you get placed in this then track of like right way to live it's gonna get really fucking tight right as you start being willing to play around it's like maybe you have some space to move around but there's there's not a ton and so you have to be willing to break through all that shit, you know, all the fucking norms, all the things that should be done the right way to live, the correct way to live, the correct way to act, the correct things to do. It's like until you're willing to break through those, it's going to be it's going to be some bounce between it and and there's going to be a tightness to that. But you expressing what's there, like really reaching your creative potential or potential or whatever. And I'm not saying in a higher self way, I'm just saying fully yourself because there is a lot of potential in there when you are willing to just be yourself, do it for you, not hesitate with thinking that there's a right way to act or a right way to fucking be. And you start busting down those walls and there's a little more. And then that leaves a, you know, residual impact on, on things. Cause you know, you are society. I am society. Like you are reality. I'm reality. As we change, everything changes. Like everything changes as you change, as you change all of reality fucking shifts and society and existence itself. So it's exciting. <laughs> I wanted to take a moment because we actually have quite a few people who have joined us here in the stream on uh, Instagram and on Twitch and YouTube Live and all of the other platforms that we're uh, streaming on right now. We're going to be doing a um, roundtable episode in a half hour. A roundtable episode is where some of the community members that we talk to on a week to week basis join us on the show uh, and are a part of the episode. Now we had some technical difficulties on our website earlier today regarding our form. Those technical difficulties have been addressed. Uh, do follow the link and the instruction on our Patreon page to get to the instructions on how to join us on the roundtable. Uh, if you haven't joined us on Patreon, we have a seven day free trial for a tier two membership and that tier two membership, tier three membership gets you on the round table. So if you would like to join us today on this episode, we would love to see you sign up for uh, Patreon. If you would like to continue on past the seven day trial, then you get to chat with us five days a week, which is a lot of fun because we get into this shit. We get deep on shit. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we laugh about ridiculous things like the D. The D, especially uh, like duck D's, those things are crazy looking. We actually talked about them for a while on an episode. If you haven't seen a duck penis, look it up and turn that safe search off because they are wild looking. They're like corkscrews. And I guess I didn't look up the vagina part, so I'm not quite Also sure. corkscrews, oh. but <laughs> in the opposite direction. So that way they cannot get forcibly raped. 
So they have to do the literally screwing. I wonder if that's where that comes from, screwing each other. I don't know, but I am relieved that you told people if they're interested in this to do a Google search rather than go find a duck. <laughs> oh, God, imagine a bunch of people running around like checking ducks like, oh, I want to see. <laughs> like, oh, Jesus Christ. Because they don't I don't think they show unless they're, you know, excited. So we got a bunch of people trying to excite the ducks running around. It's like, oh, God. Oh man, that would See? be yeah. Uh, and and right there, that that, yeah. that is the kind of quality content that you can expect to find on our Patreon page. Um, seriously though, we've been doing Patreon videos since the second month of the podcast, and we're coming up to our our two year anniversary on this podcast very shortly. There's over I don't know 600, 700 hours of group discussions and and both deep content and funny content, content about how we struggle to bring the podcast to where it is right now about the growth of the podcast things that we were we were challenged by as we started hosting retreats these are all videos that are on our patreon page and and they'll never see the light of day otherwise all of these groups that we host on our patreon page are completely private this is the reason that they're so powerful is that you can show up not feel comfortable talking come by a few times and realize other people didn't feel comfortable talking either. And then you'll say something, or maybe you'll say two things. And then a few weeks later, you'll say a whole goddamn sentence could be a paragraph. Who knows? You might just go on a rant like I do and not know where you're going. But the point is, is that you can just be yourself. We're not looking for anything. We're not trying to get anywhere. It really is just spending time because we can. So definitely consider joining us on Patreon joining these groups, joining this round table. It's going to be a lot of fun. Fuck. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Those, those group chats are awesome. Cause Oh my gosh, I, I remember, and it still comes up from time to time, nerves, worry, anxiety, and, and shit. There's buildup that happens. And like, if, if I was on a group ever, it was like, you know, if I ever raised my hand, it would be like heart fucking pounding out of my chest palms sweaty nervous i'm like fuck am i gonna remember what i'm gonna say <laughs> it's like it would sometimes i would forget it right before and then there'd be like the lump in your throat and the nerve and all that all that crazy shit so uh not crazy shit very normal responses when you're heavily you know concerned about something and i it's funny because like me getting over those feelings or not feeling them as much wasn't about getting rid of them it was about not fighting them anymore like the reason that i felt them so strongly was because i thought there was something wrong with feeling them and the day i was like oh there's nothing wrong with being nervous oh oh so i don't have to fight this and as soon as i stopped fighting it it's like it kind of started to go away and it, it's crazy how the build up into a situation and the concern and the nerves like you have a focus certain feelings come up but then it's almost no longer about the focus. It's now about the feelings and your resistance, to the feelings that you're feeling, because that's your immediate experience right now. And so can you not resist your immediate res experience that you're having right now? Like, cause, cause that, you know, practice or whatever you want to call it of being okay with your experience right now, like that plays into any future experience any other experience you have like this is the practice are you okay can you be okay with your experience right now like that's the all and everything of everything that you are like at least not think there's something wrong with you in regards to the experience and so if you can do that then anytime certain things do happen you've already kind of been okay with certain feelings and then there isn't the the fear of those feelings anymore it's like all right i'm gonna do this however i feel it's kind of irrelevant i'm just gonna do it anyway and the more you're willing to just do that and kind of reframe those fears they don't have as much sway anymore but it's a practice and feeling them and then you know doing it anyway exactly um, last call, just letting everybody know if you want to join us on the round table, now is the time because we'll be sending out the invite at about a quarter two or right at the end of this stream. So if I don't get your submission before 10 minutes from now, 
you're not in the round table. Just giving you a heads up. I understand technical issues and I'm deeply, deeply apologetic, sort of, more or less, not really my problem or fault, but it's being addressed. Nonetheless, we would like to see you on there. If you can join us, it would be a lot of fun. Um, I was just admiring this strain and I want to mention this because I've been an admirer of this strain for quite some time and I can do so on Instagram at the moment. This is a dessert, otherwise known as apple fritter by MTL Cannabis. Uh, it's really good. I just want to say that, right? It's great to work with. I have, uh, I've been really appreciating it. It is a hybrid of sour apple and animal cookies. And I have to say, we've had it at a few of our retreats. Our retreats, by the way, top notch. If you just want to chill out, be yourself, relax, be in the company of people who aren't asking anything of you because they don't want anything asked of them come to a retreat. It's so worthwhile to do so. We have a, a mini retreat coming up. A mini retreat lasts for a certain amount of time uh, from October 5th to October 9th. So it's a shorter uh, retreat than our full nine day retreat. But we have one ticket left for our Ma Vancouver mini retreat. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have foosball, ping pong, billiards. There's a hot tub. We're in a beautiful area. Uh, we're going to go for lots of walks. We're going to hang out. And there is likely going to be a lot of joints and apple fritter there. So uh, just figured I'd give them a shout out. Thank you so much, uh, MTL Cannabis, because uh, the strain is dope, literally. Fuck yeah, it is. I can confirm apple fritter is delicious. And I have thoroughly enjoyed it at one of our retreats and they really are such it's, it's just an opportunity for anyone willing to take it to be like let go of any preconceived notions of what you are what you should be and just kind of like let loose and actually let loose without the the need to be afraid of how it's going to go or how things are going to play out because there's no one there to judge but yourself about yourself so if you're left you know, with a feeling of judgment or concerned about what you're doing, it's only coming from you. And so you're kind of left with that in yourself and you can fight that or you can look at it and be like, oh, shit. OK, so if I stop judging myself, then there isn't so much left. But until you do that, until you're willing to realize that and face that, you don't even see what other people are actually doing. Because you're just seeing your own assumptions reflected and you notice the littlest, subtlest things that you wouldn't otherwise focus on if you didn't have your own judgments in the way. So if even just trying it out, like if you stop judging yourself for things, then see what's left, like see what's there, just find out. Because I, I spent a lot of my life like not even willing to look at that that oh maybe it is just my own judgments but there's so many situations where i have this assumption of like something going on it was like no that was just a time that you judged yourself really hard that was just a time that i judged myself really fucking hard that it felt like it was coming from somewhere else or it had to be oh it had to be someone else because i wouldn't do that to myself but there was never anything of issue with any of those things and you're the one maintaining it. I'm the one maintaining it. Any experience that you've gone through your perspective of it, you're the only one holding on to it. And it's the same for anything moving forward, anything that plays out. It's like you're the one seeing it from that perspective. So there is no certainty that it went the way that it went and your assumption of how it went or what it meant aren't how it went or what it meant. And again, comes back to that willingness to be uncertain or at least question your own perspective of, of what you believe to be so fucking sure and true. <laughs> well, it's such a fun circular nothing. Like when you really break it down. Okay. So you're afraid of judgment. The judgments you're afraid of just happen to be the judgments that you have of yourself. And if you're like, no, no, I, I have judgments of other people. Really? Do you have judgments of other people? Or do you have judgments of how you would feel about yourself if you were that other person? Because that's still about you. Okay, So if that's the case, then the judgments that you're afraid of are likely not the judgments 
that are happening. That's not to say judgments aren't happening, but why are you judging? You're judging because you want to feel more secure about who you are and how you're doing and what's going on and where you are in the pecking order of things and so on and so forth. And so you're biased. You know that. This is why we reach for assumptions. We're biased. But if that is all true for you, then the argument, well, yeah, that doesn't mean that people aren't judging me, is absolutely valid. But it also means that those judgments are just as full of shit. So even if people are judging you, it's not the judgments that you think they're judging you for. And if they're judging you, it's based on how they need to see themselves. So it's really not about you at all. So it's got you coming and going. Judgment makes no fucking sense. Stop thinking about it. Boom. <laughs> That's it. Like, oh, man. It's always just that reflection of yourself, whoever it is. It's reflective of that and the assumptions that you're making. Because like your whole experience is going to be assumptions until it's not. And then there's no one else left to judge because you're you're looking around and and seeing yourself. And why the fuck would you do that? And so it it almost goes hand in hand of when you stop judging yourself and taking like thinking you're so sure of your perspective that the rest kind of starts to fall away. But then as you start seeing yourself without so many judgments, it's like what's left is what is, you know. You are what is nothing to judge in that with any degree of certainty whatsoever. Your change playing out change happening. That's it. It's like, you know, trying to judge that is like grasping at a, a ghost or something and continuing to grasp and to continuing to clench your fist over nothing. So there's nothing there to catch. It's like, Oh gosh. It's like, when you're reaching for something and it's not there, kind of like the example you, you've used when you're going for that last step and then it's not there. And then it's like, oh, the drop. It's like clinging to a, trying to cling to a certainty that you know isn't so anymore. Oh shit, that shit isn't certain. And it's like, it's almost like I've gotten, like, not that I've gotten that, but like recognize that. And so when I do run back to certainty, it's like the pushback is even harsher because i'm aware that there's no certainty but if i run back to it it's like wham 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 it's like fucking punches all over the place and it's like almost feels like the weight is heavier but at the same time it's probably just in relativity it's probably just as heavy as the weight of any false certainty that you've ever experienced it's just that you're running back to something that's a fucking crack of shit and you know, part of you knows that, but don't judge yourself for it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. that's it. Right? Isn't it funny how we always just have the same temptation? It, it, it's like, oh, I've learned something. I'm going to judge myself. But if you're learning about the value of not judging yourself, then eventually you just have to just arrive. There's just the cessation of effort of work that you need to do after a certain point, and it makes sense if you think about it. Because how much work do you need to do to be yourself? You're already doing it. It's already happening until you're thinking about it. That's the whole thing. Relax. And what you're going to find is a lot of thought telling you why you can't relax. And that's the shit that you should question. That's the stuff that you've overinvested in forever. And that's all. You're just seeing the stuff that you habitually reach for. And if you just question it, just question it you'll relax a bit more because what you're going to find is that if you don't reach for it, you're still uncertain. You're uncertain as to what to do next. Relax. There's another thought telling you why you can't. There's the next thing to let, let go of. It really is this self-refining process that eventually just takes care of itself. If you just relax, just relax, question yourself and know that you're not in danger when you do so. And then in that spot of relaxation, like everything you were grasping for is right there. Like, it's like, you know, you, you're going through something or dealing with something, trying to get somewhere, trying to do something. And then you stop and you, you just sit where you're at. It's like, it's always been right, right where you are. Like that, that state of freedom is just the letting go of, of whatever shit you were thinking it was going to be and just because this is like this is it <laughs> like, right 
right fucking now this is it like you can say it a billion times but there's a there's a lot and yet nothing at all in between it you know uh yeah this is gonna be a good round table yeah. absolutely because right now we already have a few people who have submitted their entries into this round table a couple of community members i'm very excited to chat with and connect with um i will uh i'll give a few more minutes if anybody would like to submit their entry do join us on patreon again don't miss the opportunity if you have something you want to talk about if you i don't know have a project or a podcast or a social media channel and you want to be involved with this conversation the round table is the best way to do that uh everybody gets a chance to talk uh it's very informal we're not getting in here with a specific purpose uh it very very much is just an exercise in flow so we're going to wrap up here uh we will see you shortly do get that email in over the next like three or four minutes and i will fire you off the invitation at five minutes to the hour andrew this has been a lot of fun man it's been a blast bye everyone talk to you soon